In the past, I've mentioned a way to drop yourself straight into a root shell, completely ignoring the login prompt entirely. This is very useful for fixing things like broken user account, various init issues, or just, you know, not liking security on your computer. But every single time that I've done this, I've done it manually. So let's go and automate it and go and make ourselves some new entries inside of our bootloader. I'm going to start with systemd boot because this is the much easier one and anybody using systemd boot probably already knows how this actually works because what we're going to be doing is making a new loader file. So loader files are typically going to be located in your boot directory inside of the loader directory, inside of the entries directory. Now, most people are probably going to have just one entry in this folder. In my case, I actually have a second kernel set up, so I have two of them. So let's actually go and examine these files and look at what's actually being done in them, because I bet when you first set them up, you didn't really properly read what you were doing. Systemd boot is considerably simpler than grub, but there's still a couple of things we are required to include. The first one we need to include is the title. The title is going to be the name that it shows inside of the systemd boot screen. Now, in my case, it's going to say Arch Linux, but you can go and set this to literally anything you want. I'm going to set this to Arch, Arch. Yeah, we're, you know, we're going to include the mistakes and then like... I know, a bunch of random key presses. That's all fine. It's going to work with that. No problem whatsoever. Now, I would recommend that any changes you make to your loader files, you do in a copy of the file, just to make sure you have a backup there in case something goes wrong. I already do have a backup being my Zen kernel, but if you don't, before you go forward, make sure you copy the file. The name doesn't really matter. It just has to be something.com. Now, the only other required option is Linux. Now, there is the option to use EFI instead, and when you're booting from Linux, they're going to be doing the exact same thing. If you want to boot from Windows, though, I believe you do have to use EFI. All the other options we can set in here are going to be optional, but in many cases may be incredibly useful, or in the case of Linux, might actually be required. So I've got two instances of a NIT RD in here. The first one in here is going to load up some CPU microcode to address things like, you know, Spectre, Meltdown, all that fun stuff that's happened in the past. And the second one is going to load up the root file system that loads up my actual root file system. Basically, it's an initial file system to let the kernel actually do something. There's also the option to set a machine ID and a version. These are mainly aesthetic things, so if you have two things in your list with the exact same title, there is a way to distinguish them if they have a different version number. And the last thing we have, which is the most important thing for today, is the option. These are basically options that are going to be passed into the kernel to tell it to do various things like where is the root located? Should it have read, write access, things like that. So if we remember from last time correctly, we can go and pass in the init option here to go and set a new init system. So I'm going to set this to slash bin slash bash. And if we go and save that now, the next time we go and boot, there's going to be a new option in here with this ridiculous name. Opening that up, it's going to go and drop us directly into Bash. Give it just a second, and there we go. It doesn't have to be dropping you into Bash. There are various other things you can do, which I'll show you in just a moment. But if you are going through this method, keep in mind that a lot of things aren't going to work. So if you want to do something like, you know, a reboot because it can't connect with uh, with system D, it doesn't, that just does not work. Uh, if you want to go and access things like your other partitions, because none of those have been mounted, you'll have to go and mount them. So if you have a script that does all of this setup for you, then you will be good. And that's pretty much it for system D boot. But Grub, on the other hand, it supports a little bit more. I've actually got a shutdown button here and pressing that is going to instantly kill the system. That can be done with systemd boot, but in Grub, it's basically just a one-liner. The other one we have in here is uh, this lol what is security. That is going to drop us straight into a root shell like we were doing before. So let's actually see how we would do this. With Grub, the first thing you need to decide is where you're going to write the custom entries because there's two locations that can actually be used. One of them is going to be in slash etsy slash grub.d. 
and then inside of a file called 40 underscore custom. There's a reason why we're using that one, but we'll get into that in just a bit. The other place that we can use is slash boot slash grub inside of a file called custom.cfg. That file does not exist by default, and you will have to go and make it yourself. Basically, the only difference is when you use the first option, you have to go and regenerate your grub config, whereas with the second option, that is going to be automatically managed by 41 underscore custom. I'm going to go with the first option just because there's extra things I can show you. Plus, everything I've been doing up until this point has been inside of that file, so let's just keep going with the one that I've already been using. So, the way this works is actually pretty straightforward. Each of the things we have in here is basically like a, like a shell function. We have one function here being system shutdown, and the second function here being lol what is security. Now, keep in mind that these are not actually shell functions. While there are certainly things in here which are akin to shell functions and akin to shell applications, not everything is going to work. You can't just go and run like Ranger or something. That will not function. Echo is just something that also happens to be available inside of Grub as well as inside of your regular system. And a lot of the stuff between Grub and System Deboot is going to be the same, especially when you're doing something that's, you know, such a basic use case. Now, you might see this search function in here. Basically, both this and also this right here are two ways to actually go and set the, uh, the root, so I don't actually need that, and then the log level and quiet in here is just something extra I was testing out as well. So basically, this is the minimal amount you would probably want to have if you want to go and launch up, say, your shell, for example. Now, make sure if you want to load up some microcode for your CPU, you're also including that in here as well through the same means as systemd boot with the init rd command. In this case, I don't actually have it installed on this VM, so this VM's actually, you know, incredibly insecure, but that's neither here nor there. But unlike systemd boot, which is basically just load up the kernel and be good with the rest of your day, Grub actually has a bunch of extra things you might want to do as well. I haven't messed around with most of these, but these are all the commands available inside of Grub. The problem is the Grub documentation isn't, um, isn't great. But hey, if you want to play a tune, um, you can play a tune if you really want to. But let's say all we wanted to do to this menu entry is add in this init option here, and then basically just change the name to something a little bit more sensible, in this case, that being root shell. So let's go and save this, and then what we need to do is regenerate our grub config. So sudo grub-mkconfig-o, and where you want to output that to is slash boot slash grub, and then the slash grub dot CFG. Now, this is exactly why we do not modify the grub CFG directly, because that is also an option as well, and that will work perfectly fine. The problem, though, is anything that happens in the grub CFG is going to be completely wiped out every single time you have to regenerate the config file. So, do not modify this file directly always go and modify it through the means available in Grub. That'll make sure that none of your changes get wiped out when you don't expect them to be wiped out. Now, if you're ever unsure about the custom menu entries and you're not really sure, you know, what needs to be there, what should I get rid of, do I need this, do I need that, just go and copy one of the existing entries and then drop it into the custom file. It's going to operate exactly the way that you want it to operate. Then you can go and modify the parts that you don't need. For example, you might want to change the menu entry name and then go and add in, you know, an extra command here or maybe modify the option that is available. It's all well and good to understand everything that's being done. And that's great. But if you just want it to work copy and paste is your friend. So checking out that new entry I made, as we can see, there is an option here called root shell. Let's go and open that one up. And this should drop us straight into a root shell. If you want some examples of things you can do with custom grub entries, I really recommend checking out the arch wiki, which has got a section on doing exactly this. Now, there are some parts of this which I'd really recommend Really recommend ignoring. So it suggests modifying the uh, the grub CFG directly. Never, never do this. I don't know 
why this section was ever included. But some of the things in here, like how to do a shutdown command, how to do a restart command, open up the UEFI firmware settings, things like that, actually is incredibly useful. Most of the time, you don't need to do anything with it. But recently, I've been digging into different different aspects of the bootloaders, seeing what they can do, sort of comparing what is available on systemd boot and grub, and I know there are other things out there as well, and I need to go and mess with some of those as well. So expect some bootloader content, I guess, if I get around to actually making it. So that's going to be pretty much it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon, subscribe to only Bearer Pay, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five of YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.